Solving linear inequalities. We're going to begin by looking at what are we doing when we're solving linear inequalities. So solving an inequality means finding all of its solutions. The solution to an inequality is a value that makes the inequality true. To solve inequalities, we must get x on its own on one side of the inequality sign. To do this, we carry out various operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So you can add any positive or negative number to both sides of an inequality. So let's look at some examples of this. Here we are asked, given that x is a natural number, find the possible values of x in the following inequalities. So in part a, we are asked x minus 1 is greater than 4. So you need to add 1 to both sides to get x by itself. So we have x minus 1 plus 1 is greater than 4 plus 1. So we get x on the left hand side and on the right hand side we get 5. So our solution is x is greater than 5. This means that we can replace x in our original inequality with any natural number greater than 5 and our inequality will remain true. So for example, if we take x to be 7, this will satisfy the inequality because 7 minus 1 equals 6 and 6 is greater than 4. However, if we take x to be 4, this will not satisfy the inequality because 4 minus 1 equals 3 and 3 is not greater than 4. Now let's try part B. In part B we're asked x plus 2 is less than 7. So we need to subtract 2 from both sides to get x by itself. So we've got x plus 2 minus 2 is less than 7 minus 2. So we get x is less than 5. This time our answer is x is less than 5. So this means that we can replace x in our original inequality. So we can replace x in here with any natural number less than 5 and our inequality will be true. For example, x equals 3 will satisfy the inequality because 3 plus 2 equals 5 and 5 is less than 7. But x equals 6 will not satisfy the inequality because 6 plus 2 equals 8 and 8 is not less than 7. We can also multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by any positive number. Now be careful here, it's by any positive number. So let's look at some examples of this. Here we're asked, given that x is an integer, state the possible values of x in the following inequalities. So in part a we have 2x is less than 20. So we divide both sides by 2 to get x by itself. So we have 2x divided by 2 is less than 20 divided by 2. So 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 2 x goes x times. 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 20 goes 10 times. So we're left with x is less than 10. This means if we put any integer less than 10 into our original inequality here, in place of x, our inequality will remain true. So if we take x to be 8, we'll have 2 by 8, which will give us 16, and 16 is less than 20. But if we take x to be a number greater than 10, it won't satisfy the inequality. So for example, x equals 11 will give us 2 by 11, which is 22, and 22 is not less than 20. So now let's look at part b. In part b we have x divided by 3 is greater than 2. So here we need to multiply both sides by 3 to get x by itself. So we have 3 by x divided by 3 and 3 by 2. So 3 into 3 goes once, 3 into 3 goes once. And now we're left with x is greater than 6. This means we can replace the x in our original inequality here with any integer greater than 6 and our inequality will still be true. So for example, if we take x to be 9, we'd get 9 divided by 3, which is 3, and 3 is greater than 2. However, if we take x to be 3, which is not an integer greater than 6, we would get 3 divided by 3, which is 1, and 1 is not greater than 2. So we need to be careful when we're multiplying or dividing, because if we multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, then we need to reverse the direction of the inequality sign. So why does multiplying or dividing by a negative number reverse the sign? Well, we just need to look at the number line. So for example, if we take the numbers 3 and 7, from 3 to 7 is an increase, so 7 is greater than 3. Now if we multiply or divide 
both numbers by minus 1, we'll get minus 3 and minus 7. But from minus 3 to minus 7 is a decrease. So minus 7 is less than minus 3. So you see how the inequality sign reverses from greater than to less than? Let's try an example of this. Here we're asked to solve the inequality 5 minus x is less than or equal to 6, where x is an element of the integers. So we start by subtracting 5 from both sides. So we get 5 minus x minus 5 is less than or equal to 6 minus 5. This will give us minus x is less than or equal to 1. Now we need our x to be positive, so we divide both sides by minus 1. So we have minus x divided by minus 1, and we have 1 divided by minus 1. Now remember, we've divided both sides of our inequality by a minus number, so this means we reverse our inequality sign. So our less than or equal to sign becomes greater than or equal to. And now we have minus 1 into minus 1 goes once, minus 1 into minus x goes x times. Minus 1 into minus 1 goes once, minus 1 into 1 goes minus 1 times. So we're left with x is greater than or equal to minus 1. Finally, we're going to finish by representing our solution on a number line. So our solution was x is greater than or equal to minus 1, and x must be an element of the integers. So if we start at minus 1, because minus 1 equals minus 1, so this will satisfy our inequality. So we're including minus 1, and then we're going to include all the integers greater than minus 1. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and to show that we also want to include all the integers greater than 4, we put an arrow at the end of our number line to show that all the integers as far as infinity are solutions to our inequality.